What's up, everybody? Thanks for pressing play today. In today's episode of Nerdist Audio, you're going to catch me, Irvin, giving you a solo episode. So in this episode, I'm going to discuss my cue. So I've been a little bit busy, haven't had as much time to edit. I've uh, been trying to do the whole comic book thing, get some of that stuff sorted. And so it's been more time consuming than I thought. The first auction for that is actually going to be tomorrow at 6 p.m. CST Central. So come check us out. Come show your support. Say hi. Uh, I'm excited to do that. So I've been basically sorting all of my comic books um, in preparation for that. Anyways, in this episode, I'm going to go over my queue, what's on my queue. So this should be a quick episode, but I know a lot of my buddies are always asking me, dude, what are you watching? What movie have you seen? All that kind of stuff. So I'm going to try to go through some of the things that are on my queue and things that I've watched. All right, y'all know the drill. Before we get started, here's a quick clip for you to enjoy. I'm Miho Nishizumi, and this is Nerd Nostalgia Podcast. And thanks for stopping by, Panzer Vore. Oh, <laughs> and fuck you, Brian, with an I. <laughs> Hey, 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 what's going on, y'all? Thanks for joining me today in today's episode of Nerd Nostalgia. Before we get started, I wanted to give a quick shout out to all of our raffle winners. We had our raffle about a week ago, maybe a little bit longer. And so I wanted to give a shout out to all three of the winners. So we had a bronze, silver, and gold prize. For that bronze prize, we had our winner. It was a Starbucks gift card. We had all those comics. Shout out to you. Congrats. I shipped their stuff and they should have received it by now. Uh, our silver prize was a Silver Surfer Black Trade Paperback issue. And so that went to 956 Ref. Shout out to my boy 956 Ref. Congratulations on winning that. Super excited. I love that run. It's it's an awesome, awesome run. And the artwork is just trippy. And I don't know. I really like that one. So I was happy that you won. And then our final grand prize winner, the gold prize, was the German Collector. Now, sadly, he did not win the 9.6 Phoenix End Song as we planned. Instead, I ended up sending him a uh, gift card to Amazon because of the fact that he's abroad. He's in Germany, right? The German collector. Who would have thunk? And so the shipping would have killed him. And so I decided to be, you know, a super awesome person and, and still give that person a prize instead of him giving it off to somebody else. So I sent him that gift card. He should have received that. So shout out to the German collector, 956 ref and all those comics. All right, moving on. So today's topic is going to be what's in my queue. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Like I said before, a lot of my buddies are always asking me, dude, what are you watching? Uh, what show is this? Have you seen this? And so I think I consume a lot more TV than your average human being probably should or needs to, but it is what it is. And so these are some of my recommendations, things that I've seen, things that you should probably avoid. And so I'm hoping that you know this sparks some ideas. Maybe you've already seen some of this stuff. And if you have, give me a comment. Let me know what you think. All right, let's jump into it. So I'm going to start off with with a with a banger right off the rip. I mean, it just debuted. So Umbrella Academy season two, the first season was awesome. It was basically, I wasn't familiar with it. It's actually based on a comic book, right? Go figure. And so what ends up happening is I would describe it as, if you ever remember the movie called Mystery Men, it's essentially to me, Mystery Men meets X-Men kind of. And so it's really good. It's really entertaining. I have a coworker who is also a nerd. He recently just finished the entire season this week and he binged it with his wife. And one of his comments, shout out Pete, Petey Pablo, shout out to you, bud. Um, he said, this is a direct quote, that he believes that season two is in fact as good, if not maybe even better than season one, which is pretty crazy because season one was really, really good. I, I don't think I ever did a review on it, but man, it was a solid one. And so, so far I'm two episodes in and, and it's it's tracking in that direction. So far, so good. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes. So definitely check that out, guys. In the Dark Season 2, this is actually a CW show that I had caught last year as well on Netflix. The premise is basically, it's a um, like a murder mystery type thing. It's a, it's a suspense drama. And so you have a character who is blind and ends up having to uh, just go through all these obstacles of solving a, a murder. It's a murder mystery. That's what I was looking for. I couldn't think of the, the proper name. So it's a murder mystery. 
she solves it being blind. And so that's that's the catch right there. It's pretty good. Uh, the main actress is, is pretty hot. So that's always an add a bonus for the people that are interested in that. Anyways, moving forward, I'm just going to crank through all of these. Like I said, The Business of Drugs. This is a documentary on Netflix that basically entails describing pretty much all of the economics behind drugs. And so, so far it's broken it up between like cocaine, uh, heroin, I think opioids is one of them. So there's a few episodes. And so it's really interesting concept and how it came out to be. Essentially this, this woman, um, that eventually worked for the CIA, but prior to that, she went to Oxford, I believe that's where she got her uh, undergrad or one of her degrees, maybe a doctorate. I don't, I don't quite recall. Regardless, she ends up working for the CIA because she created this algorithm that was essentially trying to prevent 9-11. And so she wanted to make sure that, you know, our enemies, Al Qaeda and, you know, their affiliates didn't have the ability to attack us again. And so her algorithm basically predicted those types of things and so the CIA eventually found her and she was employed with them and was a field operative with them for a while so that was basically just the war on terrorism right that since 9-11 that's when she I guess had an interest in this and the war on terrorism has been happening since that date for Americans at least and so she eventually got to the thought process was like well there's a war out there that's been fought even longer that's been you know since the 80s And that war is the war on drugs. And so she wanted to understand the economics behind it. So she's in there talking to drug dealers, to drug mules. She's gone to Mexico. She's gone to different parts for whatever whatever it is that they're doing. If it's cocaine, if it's um, heroin, different things, right? So she's in there talking to the people that are literally involved in this world. And obviously their voices are blanked out and using fake names and aliases and that kind of stuff. But it's super interesting to see that dynamic. And so I'm really digging that. So if you're looking for a good documentary, I would recommend that one for sure. Next up is a movie, The Old Guard. Freaking love The Old Guard. It's a movie based on a comic book series. Essentially, there's... How can I phrase this? There's basically these immortal beings that kind of reminds me a lot of the Hitchcock beings and the fact that Charlize Theron also was this person. But anyways, I digress. So I can't believe I haven't actually reviewed this. I need to review The Old Guard. That's what I should have done today. Oh, well, too little, too late. We're doing this right now. So The Old Guard is basically these century-old warriors that have been together. They have healing properties and they can't die. So they fought through all the countless wars and blah, blah, blah. However, with technology being where it's at now, somebody wants to unravel their secrets and wants their DNA and wants to use them, right? There's a pharmaceutical company that you find out that is actually after them. So the whole story is just kind of following that. And so really, really good, highly recommended, high action. It's one of their most popular ones. I think they've already announced that uh, they're going to be moving forward with season or season two with episode with the second movie. Jesus, I can't talk. So with the second movie, so that should be something to look forward to. If you haven't watched the old guard, I would highly recommend it. Super awesome, super awesome movie. I would, I'd rank it up there. Like I'd say I'd give it at least an eight point five out of nine on uh, on the old nerd nostalgia Ewok scale. <laughs> Moving on, The Last Dance with Michael Jordan. Talk about nostalgia, man. So watching, I had heard about this, all my buddies, all my, my uh, athletic friends, if you will, my sports friends, my sports gurus, my sports buffs, they were all telling me about it whenever it was on ESPN, but I cut the cord about a year and a half ago, maybe longer, and so I, I wasn't able to watch it, and so I was like, oh man, you know, I'll just wait whenever it comes out and then, or buy it or something, and then Netflix went and you know put it on their, on their streaming platform, and so I was able to watch it, and holy Jesus, what a great, 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 great documentary. The fact that I can... Michael Jordan to me was always this just this basketball god, right? And I remember watching him play and just being in awe and still am. Some of the highlight stuff, you're just like, whoa, like you're still super into it. So whoever edited that documentary did an absolutely wonderful job. But the nostalgia for me was just through the roof when I was watching this because I, I could just remember being a little kid and, and watching it. And so um, one thing that it did do for me, though, it, it kind of humanized Michael Jordan for me, and it actually made me respect him a little bit more because, like I said, we envision him as this just 
this basketball God and that everything was just given to him, right? When that's not the case, when he put in the hours, when he put in the work and worked his ass off to get to where he was and, you know, wanted perfection from his teammates and absolutely just kept going for that. So the fact that I was able to, you know, get a different perspective on Michael Jordan was pretty cool. So I highly recommend that. The Last Dance, super awesome. Moving forward a little bit, another TV show on Netflix, obviously this is the Netflix category right now, was a show called Cursed, recommended from my buddy Pete, that coworker that I had told you about. So this is basically the story of King Arthur and the sword, you know? So it, it's kind of a spin to it. And so along the way, the cool thing that this show does is along the way, they reveal different characters and you're like, oh, that's, you know, Morgana from so-and-so or that's, is that the lady in the lake? And and so it does something really cool. Uh, kind of a little twist at the end there. Very good. However, not the best show, but it definitely was entertaining and I, and I recommend it. If you're a fan of King Arthur and that story, then I would definitely recommend watching this because it is entertaining. One of my other coworkers would have recommended it, uh, or actually would have stated and said that it's like Game of Thrones for girls, because it, it's for young adults, for young girls, basically, because it does have that that kind of element, that kiddish element. The acting, not the greatest. There's basically uh, Floki from the show Vikings. You may remember him. He was one of uh, Ragnar's like best friends, or one of the longest running series people. Well, he. Um, He's on there. He's Merlin, but he's not the refined Merlin that you see. So his acting, I think, really is the one that holds up that entire series. But again, not the worst thing I've ever seen in the world. Definitely, definitely entertaining. And that if you're interested, give it a go. Uh, I'd give that an Ewoks, I don't know, like a 7.5, 8? Nah, 7.5. 7, 7.5. That's good. Right there. All right. Something I have not watched, but I want to watch is Transformers War of Cybertron. I'm super interested in this because... All the Transformer movies that we see have always begun from, you know, they had to flee Cybertron and all that kind of jazz. So I'm curious to see how all of that is going to unravel and what extra myth and lore they can give us from that. So definitely looking forward to that one. Something else that I'm looking forward to watching is going to be Con Mucho Mucho Amor, Walter Mercado. And so Walter Mercado was this basically like this, uh, this mysticist, like astrology dude on uh, Latin TV and he was just this huge personality and I just remember my mom being like everybody shut up right now Walter Mercado's coming on no one talk for like the next five minutes and he would read people's horoscopes and would say you know Leo this is your month and blah 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 all that bullshit and so she loved it so I really want to watch it just just out of curiosity that's what I meant to tell her the other day when I saw her so I'm gonna have to tell my sister to put that on for her, because I think she would enjoy it. Uh, another show that has been recommended to me is Kingdom. Don't know much about it. Saw one clip, and I thought it was funny, and I want to really watch it just because of that clip. But uh, one of my friends, shout out to Catherine Mason of Painted with Lipstick. She's this artist, super awesome. Um, she's basically all about women or empowerment, beauty. And so she creates these canvases from used and donated lipstick. And she's hoping to, uh, to, to really broaden her stuff. And so she has a, a separate page called Catherine Mason Art. And that's, re that's really big and popular too. So she's a, a Houston uh, local, very great artist. Look at her stuff. Some of her stuff is, is absolutely dope as fuck. So give it a give it a check. But she was the one who recommended this show, Kingdom, to me. And so I think I'm going to give it a go once, uh, <laughs> once I have time. Because as I'm going through this list, I'm like, man, I have so many shows that are on deck. Another one that's on deck is going to be Into the Badlands Season 3. I want to say that's the last season, but I could be wrong. I watched Seasons 1 and 2. And then when I cut cable, I stopped watching it. And so Season 3... What Into the Badlands is, is basically like this, number one, it's like some of the best fighting choreography I've ever seen. But essentially what it is, it's basically a story where there's feudal, like a feudal system has kind of come about and it's centuries advanced, right? And so instead of progressing, they regress. And so, you know, you fight with swords, you fight with uh, 
with master kung fu, martial arts, fucking jujitsu, all that kind of shit, right? And so it's the story about this one warrior and a boy who's like, you know, the chosen one kind of thing. And so it follows the story. It's pretty good. Acting's not the best, but the fight scenes are fucking phenomenal. I highly recommend that. So yeah, I'm looking forward to season three. All right, moving on and kind of sticking to this uh, this action theme. On Prime Video, there is a season two of Hannah. You may remember back in the past, there was a uh, a movie called Hannah, where it's basically this little girl is like a, a little mini CIA operative. No, she's an assassin, I guess is, is the best description. But yeah, she's been trained since birth and like has extra special abilities because, you know, the CIA or government has been doing things to children to, to boost them and all that kind of stuff. And so this girl's extra special. So season one was basically a direct fucking extension of um, of the movie like it's it's almost identical so season two i think is going to be a little bit further it's going to dive more and give you a little bit more lore one of my buddies has seen it said that it was pretty good not as good as the first one but right now just any content is is good content because there's really nothing else to do so definitely recommend you watch hannah season two even though i haven't watched it yet but i'm probably gonna watch it Modern Love, this is a show on Amazon Prime that is basically, it's, it's, it's a season long, but there's, it's one shot episodes. And so it's different stories about love. And you have some that's like, you know, very romantic and, you know, this is the one type thing. But then there's some that are just very real and raw. And so it shows more of a realistic side to love and all the dynamics. And it's not always just a romantic love. Sometimes it could be self-love and finding yourself and that kind of thing. So a very interesting show. Recommend you give that one a go if you're a rom-com kind of guy, if you're into uh, just romantic movies in general. A couple of... Other movies that have been recommended to me, one is Hot Summer Nights. I have no idea what it's about. My buddy Chase was the one who recommended it. Haven't seen it. We'll give it a go. Some movies that I would recommend or shows that I would recommend for people. Uh, actually, these are all movies now that I think about it. Uh, Midnight in Paris. That is just an absolutely great movie. It's older. It stars our boy Owen Wilson. Wow. 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 So what you end up getting from this movie is basically he's able to go back in time and he's able to hang out with a lot of different older, you know, people that are big in literature. And so, um, and just artists and, and it's very cool, very cool concept. So recommend that Logan Lucky. That's a funny comedy. It has Daniel Craig in it. It's uh, it's basically like a a boosting type of movie, a thievery type of movie. I don't know what to how to describe it. Um, Instant Family. That's a pretty good one. That one's a, a little tearjerker. That's uh, got our boy Marky Mark in it, and it's the story about adopting some kids. And so instead of just adopting one, they adopt an entire family, and basically winning their trust and gaining their trust and their love and all that kind of stuff. Really good movie. Very good tearjerker. So recommend that if you're into that. And then finally, Fighting With Family, instead of Instant Family, Fighting With Family. This is another movie. It's been out there for a while, but it's basically the story of a WWE um, wrestler, actress. I don't know what to call them, but it's her story. You know, she's from London, gets a shot, all that kind of jazz. And so it's her story. And uh, I, I recommend it. It's a good movie. Um, you have your boy, The Rock Johnson in there who does a cameo, which by the way, if you haven't seen on my social media page, The Rock just bought the XFL, which was about to declare bankruptcy. He stole it for $15 million. So I'm curious to see what he does with it. I love The Rock and I'm excited for him to go on this new journey with the XFL. I thought honestly, the XFL had a good shot this year. But I think because of coronavirus, it just fucking threw that just way under the bus and definitely not going to definitely not going to happen. But we'll see. I'm hoping that The Rock is able to do something with it. All right. Final two platforms that I use all the time are going to be Disney Plus and HBO Max. Now, sadly, Disney Plus doesn't have really much that comes out aside from all the new Marvel movies and all the new Star Wars and things of that nature. So obviously you're going to have that on there. Any Beauty and the Beast, any, you know. I, would, I think I was just watching 101 Dalmatians on there the other day. So um, all that's on there. That's not changing. I really wish that they would just up their original content game. You know, I'm excited for The Mandalorian Season 2 and getting that going. And so I'm glad that that's actually still tracking in the right direction. But then 
on HBO Max, this is the new this is the new guy to the court, right? The new kid on the block. There's a bunch of good stuff that they just recently added on there that I'm hoping to see. So you have Doom Patrol, both season one and two. I had heard season one was awesome. Started watching a few episodes. It's a little slow for me right now, but it it, it was entertaining. I liked it. And so I'm going to give it a go. And again, season two, I heard is even better than season one. So looking forward to that. So both of those are on HBO Max. A movie... We talked about Michael Jordan earlier with The Last Dance. We have uh, Space Jam, which I'm excited to see Space Jam 2 with LeBron, but I'm excited for Space Jam being on here because that's just a super nostalgic movie. So if you want somewhere to watch Space Jam for free, have the Disney Plus, or not the Disney Plus app, have the HBO Max app, and boom, you got Space Jam for free right there. Another movie that I would recommend people watch is one called Idiocracy. Super funny movie. It's basically about uh, oh Clive Owen, I think. Is is it Clive Owen? No. What is the brother's name? I can't. Hold on one second, guys. God, I am so bad with fucking names. This is Luke Wilson, Owen Wilson's brother. And I don't know why I was thinking Clive Owen. I guess because of Owen Wilson? I don't know. Anyways, my bad. So yeah, Luke Wilson's in it. It has uh, Maya Rudolph in it. So those are the main people, and then it also has Terry Crews in it. But basically the story is the this hooker and this, I guess, army guy get fucking frozen in time and are put into this experiment, and so they're thawed out later, kind of demolition style, right? And so with the with the way that society went and goes, they end up becoming stupider. And so these two normal people that were just looking for money, essentially, end up becoming the the smartest people in the world. And so it's a really funny movie. I highly recommend watching it. It's it's a little older, but uh, it's a 2006 movie, but it still fucking holds up to this day and is very funny. And then finally, the last movie that I really want to watch on there is going to be Jojo Rabbit. I've never seen it. Uh, Taika Waititi is the one who who both directed and wrote the screenplay for this. Mr. Taika Waititi of Thor, Ragnarok, and soon to be Star Wars. I'm actually excited to see what he does with Star Wars. I think I think he could be the boost that um, that Star Wars needs, especially after kind of falling on their fucking faces with the last three movies. Even though I like some of them, not all of them, not all of the content, not most of the story, but you know, it is what it is. So yeah, that's what I'm looking forward to. This is what's on my queue right now. Uh, I would love to hear what's on your queue. Tell me, please drop it in the comments on our Instagram page. That's where we're most active, but you can also find us everywhere else. We're on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. All right. Well, like I said, this was going to be a quick episode. I'm, I'm trying to get that auction ready for tomorrow. Again, 6 p.m. CST on Instagram Live. Go ahead and drop a like, comment, and follow on all of our social media pages and stuff. All right, all right, all right. That's going to do it for me. Have a great day and or night. And remember, stay nerdy, my friends.